Welcome to this week's Two Minute Tuesday. This week we're going to be scratching the surface of a very large topic. We're only going to cover off a small amount today, but it'll just be a flavour of what's to come. So we're talking about car park ventilation. So first of all, I'm going to run you through the four main types of car park that you'll likely come across. First of all, there's the above ground open sided car park. Then there's the underground basement car park with natural ventilation. Then you get the underground basement car park with mechanical ventilation. And then you get the underground basement car park with hybrid ventilation. We're going to take a look at the first two today. We're going to cover off the basics of what's required there. So first of all, looking at above ground open sided car parks. If your above ground car park is totally open sided, then provided that 5% of the floor area is ventilated and at least half of that must be split between two opposing sides, then there's usually no more ventilation required for smoke or environmental ventilation. However, consideration must be given to any firefighting calls that you have because there needs to be a one square meter vent at the head of the stairs. Now we'll talk about a basement car park with natural ventilation. If your underground basement car park is partially open sided and at least 2.5% of the floor area is ventilated and at least 25% of that is on two opposing sides, then there's usually no additional requirement for smoke ventilation. However, with this scenario, to satisfy approved document F, means of ventilation, then for environmental ventilation, you would still require a mechanical system capable of three air changes per hour. This is to stop the buildup of carbon monoxide and NOx. However, if we increase the area of floor ventilated to 5% and at least 25% of that is on two opposing walls, then there usually won't be a mechanical system required for environmental ventilation. With a basement car park with natural ventilation, the vents must be evenly distributed around the perimeter of the car park and they must all be at a high level. They must also discharge directly to the open air. Now be careful of this bit when you're planning a car park because it can catch you out. Following on from this, pretty much everything else requires a mechanical ventilation system and we'll cover that in a future video. However, it is worth taking note that approved document B and approved document F do have some disparities. So if you're getting stuck whilst trying to figure out the difference on which document you should read and how you should interpret it, be free to contact us for assistance and we'll be glad to help you out. I hope you found this week's video helpful and interesting and I'm looking forward to sharing the rest of this topic with you at a later date. Thanks and bye for now.